We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. The Biden administration has proposed a rule requiring private health plans to cover long-acting injectable PrEP drugs and contraceptives without cost sharing. This will help enhance health care access. Join SunServe's 20th anniversary celebration on November 6th at the Noble A. McCarter Adult Daycare Center on the campus of Sunshine Cathedral. It will be an opportunity to celebrate senior care and form connections. Former Abercrombie CEO Mike Jeffries, his partner and a middleman were arrested in a sex trafficking investigation that involves the alleged abuse of male models. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff rallied support in Broward County. He emphasized on women's health care rights, energizing Democrats ahead of the critical election in Florida. We bring to you a curated list of queer horror films that you can enjoy this Halloween featuring monsters, murderers, and psychological thrills. Get ready for a binge-chilling binge. Good evening. Welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ daily evening television news broadcasting live and available on demand on your favorite streaming channels. We are proud to announce that YouTube has recognized Queer News Tonight, certified by analytics company vidIQ, and we now have more than 10 million views on our daily live queer news show in the world. We are proud that we have more than 1,000 new subscribers in October and that Queer News Tonight has more YouTube subscribers than any other LGBTQ brand in Florida. More than half a million of you have watched this show in the last 60 days. We thank you for watching and supporting our voice and our community. It is Thursday, October 24th, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we are going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ evening news show. Whatever happens unique in LGBTQ news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine, happening on television network, is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ community. Our mission? To support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of lesbian, trans, Latino, black, healthcare, seniors, students, faith, social justice, business, and queer culture. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2025, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ experience on our television news. Talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ and broader community. Let's meet tonight's anchors at Queer News Tonight. Let's welcome anchor John Buckley. He is vice president and program director for Unity Coalition, creator of Kyoba initiative and a free traveling social event that features inspiring speakers, topics, and a safe space for all same gender loving people of color. John, Arts United will be presenting Legacy Tuesday Social Mixer on October 29th. Tell me what's happening. Uh, thank you, Vaughn. Mm -hmm. So yes, Tuesday, um, we will be having a great social mixer. Uh, Gilead is our supporting sponsor. Um, providing services, we will have SunServe, uh, Can Community Health, um, Arts United will be discussing memberships. Uh, Essential House will also be providing resources against domestic uh, violence during uh, Domestic Violence Month. Um, Jamal Starks will also be giving you readings for your, for your spiritual cleansing. And then, of course, we have an after party from 9 to 2 with DJ Knickknack. So it's going to be a fun night um, full of community and having vital conversations that will help us to continue on the work that we do. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, next, let's welcome Greg Shapiro, an inductee into the Chicago LGBT Hall of Fame. Greg is the author of two short story collections and seven books of poetry. 
He's an entertainment journalist whose celebrity interviews and reviews run in a variety of print and online publications. Welcome, Greg. Hello, hello. Glad to be here. A couple uh, celebrity interviews that are currently available. My interview with Cindy Lauper uh, is online in the Washington Blade. Ah. And in uh, right here in uh, South Florida, in out South Florida, my new interview with the one and only Randy Rainbow. And this is about his new book called Low Hanging Fruit. Low Hanging Fruit. Oh, mm. so check them out, please. Yes. All right. Let's welcome Alfredo Overa. Alfredo is an edu ed Ecuadorian born immigrant living in Fort Lauderdale. He is a licensed real estate agent and serves as the state committeeman for the Broward Democratic Party. He is also a delegate to the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Alfredo is president of the Dolphin Democrats, one of the America's largest LGBTQ political action groups. Welcome, Alfredo. Tell me what's going on. Thank you. I, uh, you know, excited. 11 days until the election. Right. And people, Floridians are uh, voting. We have about 22,800,000 Floridians who have voted as of yesterday. Wow. So super excited about that. Oh, that's great. And of course, this is tonight's leader anchor, Van Biggs, a trailblazing advocate for health equity and HIV treatment. As community outreach coordinator at Holy Cross Health, he leads initiatives for the LGBTQ community and people living with HIV. His role as vice chair of the Ryan White Part A Planning Council and founding board member of TransEd underscores his dedication to inclusivity and systemic change. Van, Holy Cross will be providing HIV and STI testing at the Free Farmers Market and Health Fair on November 2nd. Tell me what's happening. Well, you know, as you know, we're here at Sunshine Cathedral, uh, which is where we actually have our show uh, here live. And we are partnering with uh, Sunshine Cathedral for um, a health fair um, that's sponsored. And we're actually trying to bring awareness to HIV and STI testing, but destigmatizing it. We don't want it to be stigmatizing as it appears to consistently be. Um, so they're obviously bringing a health fair together. We're going to be here doing that, providing services, counseling services, um, and doing those testings, you know, rapid tests right on the spot. And they're providing food for people to pick up. So they're expecting a huge turnout at this event. And this will be one of two that we will be doing with them. So. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin the Queer Headlines. The LGBTQ community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is fast, and here are the bullet points of the Queer News for October 24. First this evening, let's queer up health. The Biden administration proposes no cost coverage for PrEP drugs to combat HIV. In a significant move this week, President Joe Biden's administration proposed a new rule mandating private health plans to cover long-acting injectable pre-exposure prophylaxis, otherwise known as PrEP, drugs without cost sharing. This proposal is part of a broader effort to enhance healthcare access, which also includes requiring health plans to cover contraceptives without additional costs. The proposed rule addresses enforcement of the Affordable Care Act, stipulating that private health care plans, quote, to cover every FDA approved contraceptive drug or drug led combination product without cost sharing, unless the plan also covers a therapeutic equivalent without cost sharing, end quote. Drug led combination products refer to therapeutic or diagnostic items delivered via a medical device, such as a syringe. Carl Schmid, executive director for the HIV plus Hepatitis Policy Institute, emphasized the importance of this coverage requirement. He said, quote, with low uptake of PrEP among the communities most impacted by HIV, this insurance coverage requirement with zero cost sharing will help jumpstart the use of more effective forms of PrEP and lead to fewer HIV transmissions, end quote. New HIV infections continue to be a dramatic healthcare issue in America and South Florida leads the entire nation in new transmission. Studies show PrEP is now the top way to prevent transmission of the disease. Those same studies say the, the major issues to meet the 2030 World Health Organization goal of no new transmissions is one, awareness and education, two, easing access, and number three, costs. This new proposal meets all three of those goals. Mm -hmm. 
You know, here in South Florida, we hear it all the time. We're number one with mm. STIs. We're number one with HIV, uh, uh, new infections. And as we're seeing the disparities between the ages, we've got the youth at one end and we've had the aging population, the 50 plus, you know, increasing in those numbers. Mm -hmm. And I hear all the time, we hear uh, companies not wanting to cover the cost. And I think it's a great way to help end this HIV epidemic. If people don't start making these policies to be effective, and making sure that people are adhering to them, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to end this HIV epidemic. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Um, healthcare is a very important choice. Um, and also, it comes out of your check as a benefit. Right. So with that being said, uh, it's extremely important that we have this rightfully as a choice uh, to ease our accessibility mm -hmm. towards those things that we pay for. Mm -hmm. This kind of proposal from the Biden administration is yet another reminder to vote. Because you can be sure that Trump, Vance, and their Heritage Foundation horror show mm. would never, ever consider something of this nature. Vote. And it is a lesson for the LGBTQ community because it's, a PrEP is very well used in, uh, within the LGBTQ community that, you're right, elections matter. And if we want access to health care, right. vote the right way. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Vote, everyone. Do you hear that? Vote. <laughs> Next, let's square up LGBTQ seniors. SunServe celebrates 20 years of community on November 6th. In honor of its 20th anniversary, SunServe invites the community to its special celebration during the Senior Center Open House. It will be held on Wednesday, November 6th, at the Noble A. McCarter Adult Daycare Center on the campus of Sunshine Cathedral. Attendees can look forward to great company, light bites, and refreshments, including beer and wine as they mark two decades of dedicated service for the LGBTQ senior community. The, their other services at Sunshine include mental health services, housing, substance use recovery, youth services, transgender services, and women's healthy living. Don't miss out on this opportunity to connect. RSVP today at sunserve.org slash open house. Well, I resemble that. Remark. Now, anyway, um, <laughs> as the elder at the table, I must make sure to add this SunServe special event to my calendar. It's great to live in a South Florida community where the seniors are valued and embraced. So thank you. I mean, when we talk about pillars of the community, um, <laughs> we can only give respect and honor those that we have with us. So I think it's important that we have more intergenerational mm -hmm. Um, activities uh, where we support and uplift and continue that unity in, in our community, right? Absolutely. Sure. We need that more and more because as we see, and we've reported on this, you know, um, by 2030, 70% of the people living with HIV will be over the age of 50. And mm -hmm. those people, as we have learned, especially the LGBTQ community, they become isolated. Mm -hmm. They right. start, and mm -hmm. it's things like this that that SunServe offers that brings those people out and lets them connect and be part mm -hmm. of the community. And I think that's great what they do, it's awesome. Good job to SunServe. Mm -hmm. Next, let's queer up social justice. Abercrombie & Fitch, former chief executive arrested in sex trafficking of male models. In a shocking development, former Abercrombie & Fitch CEO, Mike Jeffries and his partner, Matthew Smith, were arrested this week in West Palm Beach. They are part of an investigation into alleged sex trafficking and abuse, along with a third man, Jim Jacobson, described as middleman. Jeffries, who led the popular fashion brand from 1992 to 2014, is accused of abu abusing aspiring male models at sex parties hosted at their homes and in hotel suites globally. Reports indicate that these gatherings were part of a highly organized network of sex trafficking. The models involved claimed that they were compensated up to $1,000 to attend these parties where they were allegedly provided with poppers and required to sign non-disclosure agreements. The FBI, uh, the, excuse me, the FBI initiated an investigation following claims made by the BBC. Brad Edwards from Edwards Henderson, the law firm representing some of the victims, emphasized the significance of the arrest, stating, in quote, these arrests are a huge step towards obtaining justice for the many alleged victims who were exploited and abused through the sex trafficking scheme that operated for many years under le the legitimate cover Abercrombie provided." Mm -hmm. end quote. 
Abercrombie & Fitch is one of the world's most gay, positive business brands. Um, it's unfortunate that this happens so often, mm -hmm. and it not only happens with clothing, it happens within careers, it happens within the music industry, it happens within our organizations, within our LGBT plus QIA community. Um, when you're young and you're aspi uh, aspiring to be something great, it's a very sad thing that you, you can get taken advantage of. And I think it's only fair and right that, you know, they be held accountable for just the mental infliction this has on people and, and growing individuals who are just coming into themselves. Right. right. I mean, we've seen it for decades, right? I mean, it's been around so many years. We've heard, like you said, TV, movies, music, fashion, models, both male, female, not just LGBTQ, but right. it, it hits harder when it hits our That's, own community, right? Yeah. So. I mean, it's not the first time that Abercrombie and Fitch has been in the news for bad <laughs> no, behavior. No, no, I mean, no. this is just, you know, the, the, the cherry on top of all the bad things they have done. Right. Well, if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend Ellison Clayman's 2022 documentary, White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. It is mm -hmm. well worth seeing. Next, let's square up South Florida and Florida. Second Gentleman, Doug Emhoff, comes to the gayest place on earth. Second Gentleman, Doug Emhoff, made a spirited appearance in Broward County on Wednesday, rallying support for Vice President Kamala Harris and energizing Democrats ahead of the upcoming election. Queer News Tonight executive producer attended with the press corps for the rally stop at the Get Out the Early Vote event in Hallandale Beach, a Democratic stronghold in the county, he declared. We can win Florida. We should win Florida. Despite Florida's shift toward Republican dominance since the cont uh, contentious 2000 presidential election, Enhoff is optimistic. Enhoff's visit is particularly significant as Democrats hope to gain ground in the tight Senate race between incumbent Republican Rick Scott and his Democratic challenger, former Representative Debbie Mukersell Powell. Mukersell Powell and many other Democratic candidates attended the Get Out the Vote rally. Other topics from the second gentleman included women's health care rights and Amendment 4, which aims to overturn Florida's strict six-week abortion ban. As M. Hoff condemned Trump as a threat to women's rights, he stated, Make no mistake, Donald Trump is no friend to women. He has proven himself to be a threat to women. His comments sparked chants of yes on four. Senate candidate Mukasero Powell echoed the same sentiments, emphasized her commitment to protecting health care and reproductive freedom. Following his Hallandale Beach address, Emhoff continued his campaign efforts with a rally in Miami, targeting Florida's diverse and crucial Hispanic community. His visit to Florida just a few days before the election shows the importance the state holds for the Democratic Party's win. As you can see on that picture, I'm wearing the same jacket, <laughs> and that is because I got the, the, the honor to uh, be part of the team that drove the caravan. Not him, just the caravan throughout South Florida since yesterday, uh, 1 p.m. all the way through like a couple hours ago. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is uh, Florida, does, although it's a very slim chance, there is a chance if everybody goes out and votes. And I think uh, that is one of the reasons why the second gentleman was in the uh, state. Mm. And uh, But more than anything, it's because we have to get Debbie Mukersell Powell elected and and we have to pass Amendment 3, which is legal, legalization of recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. And we have to pass women's reproductive rights, Amendment 4. Just in 11 days. You know, and I, I just find it amazing because I was talking to some people and, you know, I've only been in Florida for five, going, going on six years, but the, the amount of early voting opportunities that mm -hmm. the state provides and the mail-in mm -hmm. votes, there isn't, I mean, I, I voted on early voting when they opened it on, on Monday and I was like, I was surprised there was nobody in line. I was expecting oh. to see a line. Mm -hmm. There was nobody. What time of day? It was right when they opened. I went to the to the voting, you know, commissioner's office there, right on, oh, what is it, Prospect, I think it was. Yeah. And I was surprised, but um, at the same time, I was like, it was so easy. It's so easy and so available for people to do it. And mm -hmm. 
I get frustrated when I see end up seeing the poll results at the end of the people that were registered that didn't yeah, vote. No. You've I've, got the opportunity. Go vote. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm more frustrated by the people that don't go vote or the ones that simply say it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, Project 2025 is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. um, pushing our LGBTQ plus uh, communities out uh, being eliminated is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. um, not being able to have an abortion after being raped is a very mm -hmm. real right that is trying to be taken away. Mm -hmm. right. um, it's so important that we make sure we go out and vote not only for Florida, but for the country. That's right. You know, Trump's affection and affinity for Hitler, <gasps> surprise, surprise, is another reminder of how important it is to vote and make sure he loses by a landslide. And the saying goes, if they show you who they are, believe oh. them. I mean, they already uh, got rid of uh, Roe v. Wade, so uh, LGBTQ rights could be next. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. Next, let's queer up entertainment. Make Halloween spookier with these fabulous queer horror films. As Halloween approaches, it's officially time for Gay Christmas. Come on, everyone. <laughs> this is the moment for ghouls and goblins to come out and celebrate their best lives. If you're in the mood for something spooky and a little sassy, we suggest a fantastic lineup of horror films that are as queer as they are chilly. Queer News Tonight's curated list features everything from monsters to murderers, aliens to demons, and psychopaths to vampires all showcasing queer characters in their terrifying tales. Whether you prefer classics or the latest releases, there's something here for every horror aficionado to enjoy this Halloween season. Streaming and on-demand channels are full of our best movie recommendations. Consider I Saw the TV Glow, Freaky and a Nightmare on Elm Street, to Freddy's Revenge, Don't Miss St. Maud. Ginger Snaps, and the unnerving Raw. For those who love psychological thrills, Black Swan and Hellbent will certainly satisfy. If you're nostalgic, you can always dive into the campy fun of Sleepaway Camp or a cult classic Rocky Horror Picture Show. And for modern cutting edge scares, check out Knock at the Cabin, Closet Monster, and Jordan Peele's mind-bending Nope. Grab your friends, Pick your favorites and let the frightful festivities begin. Happy Gay Christmas. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited about that? <laughs> and I'm not a horror fan, but I am around, I, I guess I'm around Halloween, so, or Christmas, I guess. <laughs> well, I think of all the titles on that list, I have to say Freaky is probably my favorite of that list, not just for its queerness, but also for its delightful sense of humor. And I'd also like to add, as the resident film critic, uh, some of my following choices, some really great ones. Uh, my Animal is Wonderful, Totally Killer, It's a Wonderful Knife, and Perpetrator, all of which yeah. are highly recommended. Awesome. awesome. I'll have to check some of those out. I love a good uh, suspense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine's uh, Cathedral's Sunday International Service at 10.30 a.m.
We finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ One Minute News. LGBTQ One Minute News, let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Visit Lauderdale welcomes you to culinary delights on January 19th. Get ready for a delicious experience at Visit Lauderdale invites you to the beachside brunch on Sunday, January 19th. This fabulous event hosted by beloved Food Network star chef Nancy Fuller promises to be a feast for the senses. Held at the lawn at Las Olas Oceanside Park, attendees will enjoy delectable brunch bites prepared by some of Greater for Lauderdale Top's culina culinary talent, all while taking in stunning beach views. Tickets are now available with advanced pricing starting at just $65. However, prices will gradually increase, reaching $95 on the day of the event. So the earlier you purchase, the more you save. Please note that this event is strictly for those age 21 and over. Further details can be found at visitlauderdale.com. LGBTQ One Minute News, let's queer up entertainment. Queer Halloween thrills that are a must watch for you. Halloween is here, bringing an array of queer themed horror shows to spice up your streaming series lineup. From magical mysteries to deadly dramas, there's a thrilling pick for everyone. Top of this year's list is Marvel's Agatha All Along on Disney Plus. It stars Katherine Hahn as Agatha Harkness, who embarks on a perilous journey to regain her powers alongside a teen who is none other than out actor and Heartstopper star Joe Locke. Consider Dead Hot on Tubi. It's a fast-paced, dark comedy following two best friends solving the mystery of a missing lover. On Stars, Marion George tells the story of a power-hungry mother and son seducing their way into King James I's court. Netflix's Dead Boy Detectives adds a supernatural twist with ghostly, twins, uh, ghostly teens surviving paranormal mysteries. Our final recommendation is on Hulu. Death and Other Details serves as a locked room murder mystery aboard a luxury cruise ship with intense queer drama. These shows promise a frightfully good time for the spooky season, all with queer themes and stars. I'm going to say that while I am not a Ryan Murphy fan, I'd like to add the FX series Grotesquerie to this yeah. list. Not only because it's terrifying and also frustrating and confusing as fuck, <laughs> but because it stars the fantastic queer actor Nisi Nash Betts. She can act. Yeah, she. Uh, I saw a few episodes yeah. of that. It is. It's really good. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but I do have enjoyed Agatha all along. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a huge Marvel Marvel fan, so it's kind of like, oh, yeah. okay, please keep it going. <laughs> LGBTQ one minute news. Let's queer up politics. Listen to Kathy Griffin as she urges voters to focus on down ballot. Registered to vote yet? What? You've got to register to vote. The presidential election is November 5th. But remember, elections aren't just every four years or every two years. They are every year. And down ballot matters. So quit your bitching and moaning about stuff you can vote against if you don't believe in. So vote blue all the way down the ticket. Comedian Kathy Griffin is back with her hit tour, My Life on PTSD. List and she is set to break Joan Rivers' record for the most solo shows at Carnegie Hall. But beyond the laughs, Griffin has a serious message for voters ahead of the upcoming election. She emphasizes the importance of focusing on down-ballot races like local sheriffs, judges, and state representatives and school boards calling them critical for real change. 
While talking to Query.com, Griffin, a longtime advocate for voting rights, reminded people that progress hinges on both the House and Senate. Griffin said she is optimistic about Vice President Kamala Harris's prospects. Her advice? And quote, take 20 minutes of your day to research your own district and boy, is it worth it, end quote. Message heard loud and clear. Um, <laughs> that is definitely one of the most important things to focus on. Down ballot is important because once you don't see a party affiliation, people start voting. And, uh, and it's so important because we have amendments this year. We have judicial uh, uh, retentions for the Supreme mm -hmm. Court and for uh, Court of Appeals. So it's so important that people do the research. 20 minutes, it takes less. Go to dolphindames.org and you'll find the answers. <laughs> right. You know, she's, uh, she's, I love her to death, yeah. but I mean, this is great and her message is great, but what a comeback. Yeah. 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 What a comeback. Long overdue. I love yeah. Kathy and I also admire smart and politically savvy comedians like her and Margaret Cho who make good use yep. of their platforms right. to advocate for progressive causes. Right. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up entertainment. Ab Fab's Jennifer Saunders confirms that character was secretly gay. In a surprising revelation, absolutely fabulous creator Jennifer Saunders confirmed that Bubble, Edie's quirky assistant, was secretly gay. During a gold TV special, Saunders uncovered old notes that read, quote, Bubble is gay, end quote. Shocking even to herself. While fans speculated um, Edie's daughter, Safi, might be queer, it turns out the lovable surreal bubble was the true LGBTQ character. Not just that, in 2016 it was revealed that Patsy, played by Joanna Lumley, was transgender. Absolutely fabulous, is queerer than we thought. You know, I was looking at this and they came out in 1996, I think it was, and I'm like, oh, way before, way before their time. Groundbreaking. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I, I, long ago I did accept uh, the truly absolutely fabulous Jennifer Saunders as my personal savior. And I also <laughs> want to say that Bubble, as portrayed by Jane Horrocks, is one of the greatest television characters ever. And Jane Horrocks can sing like nobody's wow. business. Wow. It was a great show. <laughs> LGBTQ One Minute News. Let's square up the worldview. Australian Catholic University students' graduation woke out over anti LGBTQ hate. Hundreds of students and lecturers walked out during Australian Catholic University's graduation in Melbourne after Joseph de Bruin, former trade union leader, criticized abortion and same-sex marriage. De Bruin received an honorary doctorate, claimed abortion is the single biggest killer of human beings, and that marriage is between a man and a woman as instituted by God. Student Charlie Pantelli described the speech as selfish and shocking nodding 95% of the attendees left after the remarks. Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Mm. <laughs> mm. All I can say, I'm, I'm glad they could walk out. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know, glad they took the, the, they took the stance. They right? took their power and, right. and, and they did the right thing. Yeah. I think Jesus must have told him to stay stupid until he gets back. Mm. Or not. Or not. LGBTQ Woman at News, let's queer up gaming. Rocky Horror Video Game is here to thrill queer gamers this Halloween. Queer gamers are rejoicing in the newly announced The Rocky Horror Video Game, launched just in time for Halloween. Developed by Freak Zone Games, this retro 2D platformer adapts the iconic 1970s cult musical The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Featuring pixelated versions of characters such as Janet Weiss, Brad Majors, and Tim Curry's Dr. Frankenfurter, players will once again navigate the eerie halls of Oakley Court. Set to 8-bit versions of classic songs, including Time Warp, the game invites players to experience Brad and Janet's strange journey in an entirely new way. The game is available on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, Steam and Nintendo Switch. Uh, yeah, this is this is something. It's one of the few video games I might be willing to, to try. But I love the fact that they're using the old songs, Time Warp, mm -hmm. and remember, it's just a jump to the left. 
<laughs> yeah, I um I was definitely like a big uh, Nintendo gamer. I had Nintendo, I had Sega Genesis, <laughs> I had all of those. So I would definitely give what what better with a Rocky Horror Picture Show? As a PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch player currently, <laughs> okay. okay, right? <laughs> These are games I should have brought my my uh, name so people could tag me. We could just you know you play can, online together, right? You could give it to them, right? I will. Well, I can't remember about the top of my head. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a, that's that thing, you know, technology. You automatically sign in and you forget, yeah. you know, <laughs> what it yeah. is. That is today's news for the LGBTQ community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Join the conversation on your favorite streaming platform. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is, imp is, Im is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine, Happening Now Television Network, and Quiz Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Von Biggs, and on behalf of these LGBTQ reporters, the queer anchors, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including John Buckley, Greg Shapiro, Alfredo Alvera, we will see you daily at 8 p.m. We remind you that the presidential election is just 11 days away. Stand up for equality, rights, and representation. Early voting has started across most of the country, so get your voting done now to avoid the long lines. Let's make history. Let's vote for a better future. And to that, good night. Good night.